Let's start with gold prices, which are hovering around three-week lows as tensions in Syria ease. On your screen, the gold prices have declined quite sharply, $25 down in the international markets and more than 1% of a decline coming in for the Indian markets as well. The Secretary of State, John Kerry, and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov are to meet later in the market today to in Geneva to talk about Syria's chemical weapons arsenal. And this has dented gold safe haven appeal. The crude prices in the meanwhile hold steady as investors wait for outcome of the meeting between the U.S. Secretary and the Russian Foreign Minister. All eyes also are on the FOMC meeting, which will decide when the Fed begins to taper. The global crude prices in the meanwhile have seen an up rebound coming in, nearly 1% up on both of these. Let's get in then. Shiv Srivastav, he's Managing Director and CEO, iGuru Research and Advisory, and he joins us live on the show as well. Shiv, hi, welcome. How have you seen the rebound coming in for the crude prices? Even as we have seen the other commodities decline, this is one space which is holding firm. Yeah, we have seen some rebound in crude at uh, trading near about at 108.41. I think some bounce back expected and it will go, go up to 109.50 to 110. In Indian terms, I see some bounce back at 69502. It will go up to 7000 in near term. Vijay, even as the crude prices have gained, the natural gas prices have declined, as has been the trend in many sessions now. Absolutely, Manisha. Yesterday we talked about how natural gas has support at 224 levels. It's still not there yet, so I think uh, buying can safely be postponed as of now. Come 224, one needs to still watch out for correlation between price, open interest and uh, traded volumes before taking a call. If all these three factors do not talk about uh, a buy opportunity, I think one would still need to wait for slightly lower, lower levels. But I think it's getting into a zone where one can start uh, uh, thinking about longs, at least don't short uh, natural gas at these prices. The gold prices in the meanwhile, a second straight day of decline coming in for that. Shiv, how would you look at the prices and do you see 30,000 breaching on the lower side? Yeah, I think it will go down further. 1320 is the major support at the international market and Indian market, it will, the 30,000 is the major support. I think it will go down further and near to 30,000. I think some bounce back expected near about 30,000 in near term. Vijay, how would you like a look at the silver prices? Because while we were talking about that sub-52 level, it has come now. Would you buy at these levels? I would not, Manisha. Uh, I did talk about sub-52,000 levels provided prices, volumes and open interest. Talked about um, a conjunction of uh, some kind of indication of bulls coming back and accumulating um, uh, silver at lower levels. I still don't see any kind of strength on the screen. There is a visible and palpable uh, uh, sense of nervousness in silver. So I think I'll go back to levels of 50,000 to 50,500. Even there, I would advocate only physical accumulation rather than uh, taking any kind of a punt in the future space because the cost of carry is unusually high. And I think uh, uh, a patient buy and hold investor will not even recover cost of carry in the futures. Another sector which hasn't seen much of strength really has been the base metal space, Shiv. Even as the Chinese data has been on the positive side, we did see an impact of that in last two days. But today really has been a weaker day coming in for the base metals. Yeah, I think I'm not very much bullish on base metals. I think further uh, downside expected in base metals, especially in copper, I think it will go up to 450 in near term. And uh, lead is also very much bearish in my terms and it will go up to 135 to uh, 130 to 132 level in near terms. Shiv, what is the sense that you get from the Fed meeting in the next weekend? And ahead of that, how would you want to trade your positions? Are you expecting a tapering? I mean, how is it looking to you for the next one week now? Uh, really, it's very much tough to expect the Fed movement in near term, but I think that uh, no major more rooms for Fed to continue the QE3. I think it will uh, give an um, at um, taper the uh, QE3. So I must don't many expect in the base metals. I think it will go further downside in near term, and nickel is also very much bearish in near term and will go up to 750 in near terms. Vijay, how would you look at the nickel and the copper prices going forward, and how would you want to trade them, especially today? Manisha, uh, nickel I remain bearish on. I think uh, the 862 to 865 levels uh, will provide uh, mild kind of support because uh, the lower tops, lower bottoms formation still remains in place. The uh, INR is showing signs of uh, strength vis-a-vis -vis the US dollar and that will add pressure. Uh, the other one you mentioned was copper. I had talked about 462 being a support that stands violated. Copper is now at 460. So I think the case for 454 to 452 levels now 
uh, becomes uh, uh, the next uh, uh, floor in the absolute near term. I think across the board in almost all industrial metals, bottom fishing can be safely avoided. As I talked about yesterday, almost all of them have surrendered more than 50% of the gains made between uh, uh, mid-May and uh, end of July. And that's basically a sign of caution. Well, absolutely. From the kind of highs that we were witnessing just a fortnight back, we seems to have come nearly 50% as Vijay is pointing out. Let's start with the agro space where we have seen the Cotton Association of India releasing its second estimate for the cotton crop for the season 2013-14 beginning on 10th of October 2013 at 375 lakh bales at 170 kgs each. The crop conditions are expected to improve further in September, especially if the weather remains conducive. Vijay, what's your sense now coming in for the cotton prices? Because the produce is on the higher side, there has been pressure on prices as well. Manisha, uh, not only that, I think uh, there is also some amount of sluggishness in the uh, export uh, market. So that will also weigh on to the prices. I think 925 to 930 levels could see some amount of immediate support, I, although I would not really bet my... Uh, uh, but the bank on uh, that being a be-all and end-all kind of a support, I think there is an overhang of supply at uh, uh, higher levels. And unless that supply is taken care of, my guess is cotton prices are headed lower in the absolute near term. Vijay, what's your sense coming in for Chana prices now? A big, huge rebound on that. Yes, Manisha, we uh, talked about um, uh, China prices going up by 2.5-3% uh, barely yesterday. And there you have uh, September futures closing at uh, uh, almost uh, a circuit up today, 3.96% uh, at uh, 3,123 levels. And I think there is still a possibility of further upsides because um, you have any, any kind of... Uh, a uh, hint of weakness in the INR will see a flare up in uh, pulse prices led by China and uh, uh, the immediate uh, level uh, I will look at in uh, the September future series is 3,220 uh, uh, odd levels uh, should the buying uh, uh, follow up buying emerge and at this point in time as we speak the 3050 to 3070 band will now act as a support on the downside. All right, so good gains coming in for most of those commodities. Cotton, of course, is an exception where we have seen a decline coming in. But with that, Vijay, we'll let you go as well. Thank you so much for joining us with your strategies.